guys welcome to my channel so today I'm going to be doing a requested video on how to create a care plan for a resident or patient suffering with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes who you are going to be looking after being it nursing home EMI or residential even domiciliary care I will give you step-by-step -step guide on how to create a, a robust care plan for this person for those of you who don't know me very well I'm actually a registered nurse and I've been practicing since 2008 I am currently managing a care home but I also still practice so what I'm going to give out to you is what I have done in the past and what I'm still doing that works for me and that way you'll be able to give the best care to your residents who are suffering from diabetes I'm sure by now you you would have heard so much about person-centered care that's what's up in healthcare. So before you start your care plan, you must find out about your resident. To be honest, everyone who suffers from diabetes are fine. In my experience has some story to tell has a certain belief about their disease and has the way they manage it. So you must find that out first of all before you start doing anything else. Sometimes residents will tell you in confidence that they sometimes sneak some sugar in their tea. That way you'll be able to give the right advice. You need to gain their trust. You need to be the one who they can talk to and tell you things about them. So that way you'll be able to plan your care. Um, effectively so you need to find out what they like eating what they like to do what they've done in the past and overall what makes them happy this is the first thing you need to do before you start creating a care, a care plan and that way you are looking to create a person-centered care my care plan should not look the same as yours maybe some similarities but when you read people's care plan you want their personality who they are like to be screaming at you writing a care plan remember but that you are writing a care plan for anybody who comes into contact with that person to be able to understand that care therefore you need to make it extremely clear so that if any other person comes in to look after that resident they'll be able to understand exactly what you're talking about get your resident involved in the care plan if they are compost mentors but if they lack capacity make sure you get their families get a lot of people involved get their GP involved and get to know them to be able to create an effective care plan. management you need to be writing a risk assessment for hypoglycemia for when they go hypo especially when they are on um, um, insulin or if they are on tablets such as glycoside uh, which can cause hypo you need to be writing down um, that medication and also do a risk assessment for what you would do if they become hypo and again you mention your hypo kit and mention how you're going to get the doctors involved mention blood glucose monitoring and all of that but you need to make sure that the risk assessment is involved in the care plan so and, and I mean the purpose of care plan is identifying risks as well and then do a risk assessment to prevent that risk from occurring or if it happens what are you going to do about it support is their dietary care you must write a robust care plan and um, for what they are eating I know that when you look out there and when you go to your supermarkets they tell you diabetic meals there is nothing like a diabetic meals it's a way of company extorting money from us basically are they eating well balanced diet if they're having sugar in their tea this is when education comes into place and you can tell them you do not need to have that sugar because it sends your blood sugar high why don't you try a sweetener or why don't you even try having tea without sugar you know you need to educate them it's all about education when it comes to diabetes to be honest if people understand what they're doing they tend to manage it better so draft what they're eating make sure that they're eating very well if they are on the big side then you get the dietitian involved, get the GP involved and help them to manage their weight loss because often you find, especially in type 2 um, diabetes, that when the weight drops, everything starts to fall into place, blood pressure then drops a little bit and uh, you know because usually uh, blood uh, high blood uh, pressure is essential when it comes to type 1 uh, type 2 diabetes sorry but once you control the weight you find that the blood pressure starts to balance then the blood sugar and even when you check the lipids um, cholesterol for example you know cholesterol it starts to balance as well so it's all about management so you help them with that is very important again it comes to 
putting risk assessment into place. If they tend to sneak in some sweets or their families tend to uh, sneak in some sweets for them, you need to do a risk assessment on that because sometimes the blood sugar might go up and somebody who doesn't know them very well might think, oh my God, what's happening? But writing that down will lead them to actually investigate, has family been in, what have they brought? Or sometimes if they're refusing to eat because some elderly, um, residents refuse to eat at some point in their lives and if they are suffering from diabetes that will affect the uh, the level of the uh, blood sugar so again you need to be doing risk assessment if they stop eating what are you going to do again you need to be contacting your doctor contacting the diabetes nurse and most importantly the dietitian obviously you cannot force someone to eat and if they're refusing to eat and drink especially towards the end of life or if dementia kicks in the best thing to do is document it um, and and again support them towards that choice you cannot force people to eat with medication, for example, you might, um, uh, with, with, obviously, with the support of the family and with risk assessment in place and with dolls and everything else in place, then you can do covert medication where you can hide the medication in the food. But when it comes to food, you cannot shove it in somebody's mouth. But you can try um, by asking for help out there from your doctor, from, from the diabetes specialist nurse and the dietitian. And if you've done everything and they still won't eat, again, you have to document and you have to respect that choice. Because sometimes it might be because they're nearing their end of life and there's nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. But do a care plan on, on, on food and do risk assessment. As you're planning the care, risks will be popping out. Make sure you document them and... Um, and make that visible in your care they plan. are on if they are on insulin find out what the insulin regime is you need to be speaking to the diabetes specialist nurse to your GP before you can create this care plan because they will give you the information that you need to be able to draw a care plan look at the prescription and write out what medication they are on should be able to be showing on that care plan what time they have that medication do they have BM checked before they inject their insulin and to be honest every insulin injection should have uh, the blood sugar monitoring done prior to that so you need to be documenting that if you're not a registered nurse you shouldn't be given insulin if anybody should ask you to do that the client because you're not supposed to be doing that so if you're in a residential home the district nurses should be able to do that and therefore they'll have their own care plan but you should have your care plan on how often you monitor and what you do when you feel that they've suffered from hypo remember to do a mental capacity assessment if you suspect that somebody may lack capacity and they still want to give their medication do an assessment first before you agree to it and again have risk assessment in place so you need to support them in monitoring and managing their medication for example you need to support them with the appointments that they have for their medication review for um, HbA1c checks you need to make sure that you're there for them if they can do it themselves just be there anyway to support them um, with their consent if they can not do it themselves then it becomes your um, responsibility to make sure that they attend every appointment to make sure that they are fasting before they go for their uh, their HbA1c blood test and things like that manage their medication very well and make sure that they are taking it first thing you need to be doing is a double dose of support which is foot care and wound care so foot care I will tell you why when something happens to a diabetic on their foot is very very difficult to heal because of the lack of circulation in the extremities and this is what comes with the disease so you need to make sure that they have um, podiatrists who is looking after their feet do not attempt to cut a diabetic nails or um, residents suffering from diabetes do not attempt to cut their nails or their toenails always always refer them to the podiatrist who will help you do that because if you cause a problem that wound will be there for a very long time again if they have existing wound you need to do a robust care plan for that wound you cannot 
heal a diabetic wound by yourself you need to make sure that your tissue viability nurse is involved otherwise if he gets infected it can cause limb amputation and you do not want that for your resident okay so make sure the wound beds are managed and you've documented it and you're in constant um, conversation with the tissue viability nurse take swabs if you suspect the wound is infected immediately and report it and get it treated as soon as possible check pressure areas make sure that if they are bed bound for example that they have um a high profile um pressure relief in mattress and cushions make sure that you're looking after their skin because once the wound occurs it becomes really really problematic so, as i have mentioned before you must support um patients or residents with diabetes in managing coexisting diseases some of them do suffer from high blood pressure high cholesterol depression stroke and so on you need to be able to support them in managing it check for the appointments liaise with um, specialists who are involved in their care and get their family and them involved tell show them that you care and again document that in your care plan in your, all of your constant communication with um each specialist area make sure that you document that as well and again for blood pressure you need to do a care plan for that that you're monitoring it for example you can say that they have blood pressure as well as diabetes and, and behind you've got your risk assessment for when uh, blood pressure goes up and what's going to happen what would you do about it and things like that and how often do you uh, monitor their blood pressure as well so it's very important when it comes to depression I've noticed and again because I trained as a specialist diabetes nurse but I didn't practice for too long but what I've noticed is a pattern of depression I think it's probably mostly because um, when you get diagnosed with diabetes it comes as a shock I don't know what it is and people just obviously worry so much and and life becomes to them um not so much fun anymore and you find low moods and and depression find out about your resident or your patient talk to them about how they feel and from the questionnaires the depression questionnaires you might find that somebody might be suffering from depression and then again you can contact their gp and support them in that way maybe they can get some antidepressant to help them okay so look into that again it's all about looking at the person as a whole and all about supporting them holistically I care make sure that they're getting their eyes checked regularly and you're supporting them with that again it's down to who is compost mentors and who is not and that way you can plan your level of support for them for type 1 make sure you're checking for the ketones as well and again document that in your care plan i'm going to give you a list of risk assessments that you should definitely have involved if you're planning for um, a care for any resident with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes